My name is Jared Davis, and a lot of you out there don't know me, but I can tell you this about me. I'm not a very lucky guy. In fact, I'm a very unlucky guy. Um, but today, right now, I'm a very lucky bastard. The reason why is because I have around my neck here a dog tag. Now, this isn't just any dog tag. This isn't uh, you know, just any dog tag you can buy anywhere. This is a very special dog tag. The reason why is because this dog tag is... Um, is a, is a ticket to get to see the United States U.S. premiere of Inglorious Bastards. Now, uh, for someone who's very unlucky, who's always in the wrong place at the wrong time, in the wrong day, his whole life, uh, the movie gods for once have smiled on me and I uh, actually got a chance. I was in the right place at the right time, on the right day in the right city, in San Diego, part of Comic Con 2009, and uh, I got off work Friday, heard about this, uh, you know, this giveaway they were doing, the first 200 people who were in front of this coffee house come Saturday morning, uh, we're going to get tickets to see the, a sneak peek of Inglorious Bastards in San Diego. So I work all day Friday, uh, I get off work Friday night, and I go downtown in front of the coffee shop, and I see about 60 people in, in, in the line there. So I'm thinking, well, this is looking pretty good. I get out, um, sleep there all night long in front of the coffee house with my buddy Pratch, and uh, come Saturday morning, we, we get tickets. Um, like I said, you know, we didn't just... Uh, we didn't just uh, trip and fall and get lucky in these tickets. We actually earned these dog tags. We earned these things, okay? Uh, now, when we were at the premiere, uh, Eli Ross said something very interesting. He said, you know, with these dog tags, with these tickets, come uh, great responsibility. And uh, what he meant by that is, what I'm thinking is, is that uh, now that I've seen the film, and a lot of people haven't, um, being blessed to see it, uh, I take it as my responsibility to uh, do a movie review for you guys today, okay, on the film, and let you know my honest uh, opinion about what I thought about the film. Now let me start by saying that I am not a movie critic. I'm just a guy who loves movies, loves Tarantino films in general specifically. Um, now with that being said, a lot of you out there might be thinking, well, you know, if you're such a diehard Tarantino fan, then, you know, what, this movie's review is just going to be all hot air and just, you know, you glorifying Tarantino because you're a fan of his. Actually, no, it could be the opposite of that. Because I'm such a diehard Tarantino fan, I'm going to be more harsh, a lot more harsh than a, than a movie critic is going to be. Because I expect a lot of, out of uh, Tarantino. Um, I have a very high bar set for him. And if he doesn't deliver, I'm going to be very upset. In fact, I'm going to take it personally. I'm going to be very upset and take it very personally. And uh, I'm going to let everyone know about it. With that being said, after seeing this film, I can tell you this. Tarantino delivers. He delivers for me. He's going to deliver for you guys. If you're a Tarantino fan out there, this movie is outstanding. It is a true Tarantino film uh, with a few unique things about it. Uh, one of the first, uh, right off the bat, one of the first things that uh, I found unique about it is um, a lot of you guys know that with a lot with Tarantino's films, uh, there's a lot of comedy in it. There's you, you laugh out loud when you watch a Tarantino film. Some parts are like watching a, a comedy, right? Uh, for this this film in general, for me, I thought this was Tarantino's funniest film. I mean, the you know when the funny parts would happen in the film, I mean the whole theater's just erupted in laughter. I mean, th there are some really funny parts in this film. However, just as funny as it is, and just as soon as you're laughing, you get just on a dime turns around, and it's very very intense. In fact, I'd say this is probably Tarantino's most intense film ever. I mean, when it gets intense, buddy, it gets intense. And uh, it, I, I, for me, I don't know, I mean, I found that very entertaining and I think you might find it as well. Now, next let me talk a little bit about the actors and the actors in the film. 
Um, you know, a lot of people might have some questions about, you know, number one, let's start with uh, Brad Pitt. You know, did Tarantino compromise his casting? We all know Tarantino is very, very particular about it, about the actors that he cast in his film, but did he compromise by casting Brad Pitt as the role as Lieutenant Aldo Rain? Because with Brad Pitt being, you know, someone who can put butts in the seats on opening day. After seeing this film, let me say this, that I can't see any other actor as Lieutenant Aldo Rain but Brad Pitt. I mean, he is Lieutenant Aldo Rain in this film. I mean, he is perfectly cast, and even if Brad Pitt wasn't Brad Pitt, I believe Tarantino, if he knew who he was, would have cast Brad Pitt in this role. Uh, he's hilarious. He plays the role with 100% believability, and being that he's, uh, I, I think I read somewhere that uh, Quentin asked for a very specific accent from the Tennessee Mountain region, and being uh, close there, I myself being from Alabama, I, uh, I, I believe it, and if uh, I don't believe it, I'm not going to believe anything else about it, and Brad Pitt pulls it off. Uh, next is uh, Christoph Waltz, who uh, actually won Best Actor at the Cannes Film Festival, and uh, after seeing the film, I can definitely see why. I mean, the role of this, he's the villain in the movie, and the role of this that he plays here, uh, he could very well go down in movie history as one of the biggest villains of all time, uh, you know, right up there with Darth Vader and Scarlett O'Hara. I mean, he's that ice cold, very, very intense. Um, another standout actor for me was uh, Eli Roth. Now, a lot of people know Eli Roth as a director from uh, Hostel, Cabin Fever, but Eli's a good actor in this film. He's, he's, he's got a lot of funny parts and uh, he definitely was well cast as the Bear Jew. And when you see the film, you're going to know exactly what I'm talking about. So Eli, good job. And uh, also thanks for signing my poster. I'm not just giving you props on your acting, man. I really believe it. I really, uh, I really dug it, man. Good job. Uh, next, uh, you know, the whole you talk about, you know, I can go on and on about every actor in the film and, 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 you know, different aspects about that, but let me just say this for the rest of them. Mike Myers, Melanie Laurent, um, you know, everyone was just perfectly cast. Uh, Tarantino, uh, as you all know, is very particular about his, about his casting and about, also about, you know, every aspect of his films, but, you know, about his casting, very particular, and every role in this film, every actor in this film was, was excellently cast, perfectly cast, perfect fit for each role for every actor. Okay, next let me talk about the pace of the film. Alright, some people might, um, I myself was looking to see like, uh, well, the film's like a little bit over two and a half hours, and I'm thinking, well, is there, you know, with that pace being set, or with that time, is there going to be any spots in the film where it kind of you know, slows down or, you know, dries a little bit? Uh, let me say this after watching the film. I thought the film was about 45 minutes long because of the way it's paced. I mean, I am on my toes the whole time. There's never, the feeling when you're like on the edge of your toes, you're, you're leaning forward the whole time in this film. It just keeps you on the edge all the time. You're not falling forward, you're not definitely not standing still, and you're definitely not leaning back, but it just keeps you right on a, a good pace the whole time. There's not really any slow parts in the film. Um, so the, I mean, two and a half hours, went about like that. Um, next, I'm gonna say this. If, don't take my word for this, okay? Uh, I'm not a film critic, like I said. Don't take my word, don't take the film critic's word. I want you guys to go out there and I want you to see this film for yourself. If you're a Tarantino fan and you like Tarantino movies, you're not going to be disappointed with this film. Tarantino delivers the goods on this film, okay? Um, like it's, uh, like every, like what he said, I mean, it seems a little awkward, you know, like when you read the, well, when I read the reviews, he says it's like a spaghetti western set in World War II. I'm thinking, well, how is that possible? But see the film, it makes, makes sense, okay? So go out there, see the film. It opens August 21st. And I predict this is going to be a big hit for Quentin and the Weinstein brothers. And I really want to see it be a big, be a big hit because, Quentin, if you're watching this, I want to see the prequel. So prequel, prequel, prequel. Everyone else out there, uh, August 21st, go see the film. Now, let me say this as a closing remark about this film. My favorite film of all time, Quentin movie or not, of all time is Reservoir Dogs. Now, after seeing this film, I probably need to see it about 30 or 40 more times. But I can say after the first screening, I'm putting it right up there with Reservoir Dogs, okay? I'm going to see it a lot more, Quentin, guys out there. But uh, for my first initial screening, it is, it's for my money, is exactly what I want. I've always wanted to see uh, Quentin do a World War II movie when I read about it uh, a couple years back in Glorious Bastards. And uh, that's probably my favorite genre of film is the, the Bunch of Guys on the Mission movie. And uh, this movie is... Uh, it um, did not disappoint. Delivered dead on the money, and uh, if it hadn't, I would have told you, okay? So take my word for it. Um, I'm honest, and uh, speaking the truth here, go see the film August 21st. Thanks.